Next, staying on the topic of the Dallas Cowboys, we shift gears into the newest Dallas Cowboys head coach, the ninth coach in the team's history, Mike McCarthy. Now, there are going to be some changes here. We know his staff is going to be different than Jason Garrett's staff, although there are some similarities, right? He he is keeping Kellen Moore on as his offensive coordinator, which is, I think, good for Dak, but I will be curious to see if McCarthy, who has largely taken the play-calling duties for his career, if he continues that now with the Cowboys, or if Kellen Moore is still allowed to build on what he did last year. And hell, we, even in that extent, we wondered to what degree he really had control and influence over that versus Jason Garrett kind of uh, overruling him and overriding him. So that's a legitimate question, but one that we're going to have to wait for answers to later, frankly. So in the meantime, let's keep the focus on what we know. Surprising changes to the coaching staff. Rod Marinelli, gone. He's to Oakland, or excuse me, Las Vegas at this point uh, with the Raiders. And you do bring in the tight ends coach from the Giants. You steal him away. I think that's good because Dallas, you know, I I think Jarwin is a free agent. They're going to have to do something there. But I don't think Witten comes back. I think Witten came back for one last stab at it. And although he had his nice moments and basically, I think he tied, ended up tying, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, uh, Des for the franchise record at touchdowns, but he did not surpass it. Or if he didn't tie it, he fell one shy of it. Regardless, uh, Witten's production slowed down as the year went on. That happens when you're 38 and you can only run about six yards before you're brought down because you're certainly not making anyone miss at that age. But in that In that uh, hiring, I think that you're going to see an increased importance on the tight end position. McCarthy, obviously, is a coach who has very much believed in the West Coast offense, having worked with Montana, uh, having worked with Aaron Rodgers. West Coast offense is not so much a vertical passing game, but I think modern NFL dictates you must do that. So if McCarthy has really changed in that regard, you're going to see more of that, I think. And with Green Bay, you also had with McCarthy, I think it was like a 63% passing percentage which is huge the Cowboys were 57 percent last year and the West Coast offense if you do run that it integrates a lot of short passes to the running back as an extension of the running game so the numbers are still kind of skewed but we'll see we'll see on that front uh surprising moves though was the release if you will of John Kitna not bringing him back despite him being I think very integral to that big step forward Dak Prescott took this past summer or this past season uh, I don't love him not coming back. I think he would have been a good guy to keep. Although you do keep Kellen Moore, who Dak has worked with for at least the last two years. It is true, however, that this is going to be Dak's, I think, fourth quarterback coach in five years. Like, ugh, that's not good. They are moving Nussmeyer over, for, former quarterback in his own right. They are moving him over from, I believe he was the tight ends coach to now quarterback coach for Dak. So there's familiarity there, but it's nevertheless still a change. And I mentioned earlier, they brought in the coach from the Giants. Uh, Chris Richard is gone. You have other moves like that as well that Dallas is going to have to figure out. They've taken a hard look at running back coach and things of that nature. And I'm curious to see what they're going to do. It looks like they're going to bring back an old running back coach for them. Uh, Skip, going to bring him back. He was here in the round 20. 2012, I think, was his run. I'm curious to see what they're doing. We've seen that they brought in the special teams coach from San Francisco. I think that's a very underrated hiring for the staff, especially considering how good San Francisco is in special teams department compared to the Cowboys, who under Garrett the last three or four years have been bottom of the barrel as far as the league is concerned. This is a this is a coaching staff full of change, is what this is boiling down to. Only a couple of guys are being retained, and... McCarthy is bringing in his team, his new staff. I'm very interested to see what they do with this because this is uh this is going to be it's going to be a fresh look, but we're really going to find out I think was the problem the coaching staff or was it the players. Now, a fresh voice in the room sometimes will shake that up for you, so maybe you'll get some benefit in that regard out of the McCarthy hires, but You know, there's some question regarding McCarthy about even though he spent a year away from the league and said that he really did soul searching and all that and that they're going to hire a whole analytics team of like 8 to 14 people or whatever to help them not just understand 
the analytics and the uh, percentages of stuff during the week in preparation, but also in game, kind of like John Harborough does uh, with the Ravens this year. And that was huge for them. McCarthy is also the guy who famously said analytics are for losers, but you know, we'll see. It, we're taking his word and the indication that he has changed, but you know, it's kind of that thing where it's like, ah, old dog, do you really have a new trick? We'll find out. We'll find out. But it is interesting to note that Mike McCarthy has as many playoff wins in AT&T Stadium as any coach in Cowboys history. Obviously, you only got Jason Garrett in that, but both of them won twice in AT&T Stadium. And uh, yes, McCarthy won his only Super Bowl at AT&T Stadium in uh, early 2011. So interesting to see there. I, I'm curious to see how this affects the team because this is an offensive hire and that is the way pretty much all hirings go for head coaches in the NFL these days. Most all it's an offensive hire and a guy that's considered a pretty bright offensive mind. But if you look at his troubles towards the end of his run at green Bay, you would hear a lot of people have similar criticism to him that the Cowboys actually had for Jason Garrett. So this will be this will be an interesting experiment. This is the belief that the problem was the staff, the coaching staff entirely, and not the players. We will find out soon. But at the very least, based on the press conference, the introductory press conference we got from McCarthy, it's going to be a fresh, uh, refreshing experience sitting through those because Garrett famously said nothing in his press conferences. It was the most generic, devoid of any real uh, interest pressers you could have i mean it was just complete autopilot tune out mode and with with mccarthy at least you have jokes immediately as you know when he interviewed with the with the joneses he said that he had watched every play from the cowboys from the previous season and analyzed it and at the press conference hopefully this is a little bit more of a joke than it is an honest admission he basically had to say well you know um i told him i saw every play i actually didn't but you know hey I wanted the job. And so hopefully, hopefully we'll uh, get that sorted out. I don't know yet if he's communicated with Dak, but I know after, you know, a full week after the hire, he still hadn't. So there were people who were like, so let me get this straight. You say you've changed on analytics, but it looks like you're more so looking for a public endorsement on that front because you didn't have it in the past. You're on record now admitting that you haven't actually watched all of the tape that you said you've watched. And you've yet to reach out to your quarterback who you say you want to build around for the future. You make clear you want Dallas to pay Dak and not just franchise tag him for the upcoming season. But you haven't called him yet. You haven't communicated with him yet. Hmm. <laughs> That's a very valid question. So we'll see. But at the very at the very least, I know I keep saying that, but at the very least, it's, this is going to be an interesting new era for the Cowboys, and we're going to find out just how good this team is. And last year, we asked ourselves, are they contenders or pretenders? They could not have been more clearly pretenders. Let's see if it really is just a fresh coat of paint they need, or if there is serious systematic issues they're going to have to spend some time working through.